our sessions. So our first speaker of this session is Mikhail Burza. Mikhail is leading deep learning and NLP lab at ISTEF, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. He's founder and leader of Deep Pavlov. We'll talk about it today. And uh, this group at ISTEF is famous not only by the research that it does, but also by the hackathons that they organize every year when there is no COVID. And we hope these hackathons will resume. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice type of an event. And Mikhail is also involved in the newly formed AI Research Institute in Moscow. So let's start with this presentation about the problem. Uh, okay, Kramp, uh, thank you for the kind introduction and uh, also thank you all for coming here and uh, also thank for all people who helped to organize my visit to Armenia. And actually, uh, I see that uh, in terms of, uh, I like to visit Armenia and I have been here already uh, quite many times. And uh, interestingly, that uh, my visit to Armenia is it's not only vocational, but mainly for science and technology purposes. And uh, actually, Armenia is one of the top countries I have visited uh, for uh, like science and technology presentations, stuff like that. It's like uh, US or China, uh, where I have, I have also the countries which I have uh, the most visits. So this is, I think, like a, a very good uh, sign, and uh, I like that uh, Armenia is one of the countries which has a very um, good uh, like acceleration and development in the machine learning. And uh, so today I will uh, talk you, uh, 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 my talk will be devoted to the, uh, our open source framework, which we have uh, developed for uh, three and a half, maybe for four, for four years in our lab. And this is uh, open source framework for multi-scale AI system. So let's start uh, with the question, why uh, conversational AI? Why it is important? Uh, I think, uh, and I see that uh, in the, rather near future, uh, AI assistant uh, will be uh, like a disruptive technology because it will be uh, like an uh, ultimate interface to all uh, other services. And they will live on our smart speakers, smartphones, cars, and TV, and they will have all the current big technologies like search, like social networks, and as their backends. So they will be the first interface you interact when you want to uh, get new information, when you want to solve your task. So this will be one of the key technologies if you want to interact with a uh, user. And uh, indeed we see uh, rapid growth of uh, smart uh, speakers uh, during uh, last years. And uh, we also see uh, the trend that all these speakers, they became uh, more and more uh, multi skill so, for example, uh, here on the chart, uh, on the left, you can see uh, a number of skills. It, it was like one year ago, or maybe two years ago. Number of skills in Amazon Alexa in the US is, is about um, 65,000 skills in Alexa, which means that it's now a smart speaker is like a smartphone where you can install a lot of applications for the task you want to solve. And this is also important not only for the customer devices, but and, and smart speakers and uh, personal assistants, but also if you are uh, building uh, assistants uh, for your clients uh, in the big enterprise, you have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, parts of your user experience, and they are uh, more or less independent. Like you can have surveys, promotions, campaigns. On the other hand, you can have a customer service, technical support, product usage, billing, account management, logistics, and all these uh, different activities and different tasks can be better addressed by the uh, specific uh, uh, advanced uh, skills. So this is why uh, building not just general um, uh, 
uh, assistance, but multi-scale assistance, assistance is important. Uh, so let me give you a brief introduction in, into the uh, current uh, conversational AI stack in terms of software. So uh, at the very uh, top of uh, this stack, we have uh, multi-scale orchestration. And currently, this is only proprietary technology uh, by Alexa or Google Assistant, where you can develop your own skills and uh, deploy it on the Alexa uh, platform or deploy it uh, inside the Google Assistant. And in Russia, it, it will be uh, Alisa. And then you have uh, the next uh, level is uh, conversational skills. And here we have a lot of tools right now, like Rasa, one of the most popular uh, uh, tools for development of um, uh, conversational skills. So it, it's like a uh, some set of scripts or uh, ML models to solve specific tasks. Uh, we also have see, here Pandora boards, Element, and some other uh, open source tools on the right. But also on the left, we have uh, some tools from the uh, big companies like Bot Framework from Microsoft or um, Dialogflow from uh, Google or Amelia or Core AI, like independent uh, commercial uh, uh, platforms providers, uh, or in Russia it's just AI. And then if, if we go uh, deeper, we have um, uh, we are working not with the conversation, specific conversation, but with the specific uh, responses of the user. And then we, we should use a natural language processing frameworks to understand uh, users. And here we have a lot of open source tools like Spacey, Stanford NLP, Transformers, or NVIDIA NEMA. And if we go deeper, then to power um, many of these uh, NLP frameworks, we have a PyTorch and TensorFlow at the bottom. So what is uh, the current uh, state of technology? Uh, how today usually we build uh, dialogue systems? So let's consider uh, this problem and, uh, of uh, booking uh, tickets for uh, the movie. And here it is solved with the so-called modular uh, dialogue system, which is uh, at the moment uh, the most common system in, in the production. So we have a user, user have some request. And first, uh, this request, it, if it's in a form of speech, they, it is converted uh, to the text, and this text goes to the natural language understanding model, which uh, performs uh, mainly three operations. The first one is domain detection. In this case, domain is a movies. And then intent detection. In this case, it's um, a request a particular movie. And then entity detection, which like a parameters of your uh, intent. And here, it's uh, entities are like movies and weekend. So after natural language understanding module, we have some formal description, some uh, data structure which describes the uh, current state of uh, the um, uh, current state of the user uh, request, and then it should be integrated into the uh, current context of the dialogue. So this uh, uh, description of, of uh, the response goes to the dialogue manager. The dialogue manager integrates this information, maybe with some rules or with some uh, ML models, into the uh, dialogue state. Dialog state is a description of the current context uh, of our uh, interaction with the user, which describes uh, like some specifics of the problem uh, to be solved at the stage of uh, the solution for this problem. For example, uh, which requests we already had from the user, which information we already provided to the user, and so on. So here, uh, then a dialog manager, after integrating this information in the dialog state, it decides what to do next. So it has some policy or script. And then, in this case, it selects action request location uh, because system wants, wants to narrow down a list of uh, movies to present to the user. And this information goes to the natural vision generation part of our modular system. And then uh, the response to the user is generated in the, in the form of question, where are you? So this is how the <coughs> current systems works. So what we want to do uh, uh, with our open source uh, library? What is our ambition? Actually, we want to create something like a Linux for personal AI assistants. And uh, 
like if, if we can measure this uh, quantitatively, so our idea is that, that, that in some future, like maybe 10 or 20 or 50 years, half of uh, the population of Earth should use personal assistant, which is powered by our technology. I don't know, maybe we, we, we will reach this uh, goal or not. Uh, we will see, but we will try our best to do this. So what is uh, our idea behind, behind uh, our framework, our architecture of our framework? So uh, let, let, let's take a look at the life cycle of uh, the development for the uh, current uh, modular dialogue system of our uh, uh, personal system. And uh, on the top you see I, I have, um, have this NLU and dialogue management uh, part. And you start with, with building some uh, MVP. And for this MVP, usually you can easily draft some scripts and provide some examples of your uh, intents, and it, it's very easy to get something which uh, works. But then you uh, deploy it, and then you uh, have uh, a lot of um, variability of uh, user requests, and uh, you starting to optimize your system, you add more features uh, on the NLU side to better understand user requests, and then uh, your uh, product guy wants you to add more functionality and you start to add scripts, extend your scripts, make it more complex. And then uh, on the right, uh, right hand side you can see uh, the outcome, which we can call like a mature AI assistant, uh, which cannot grow anymore. And uh, as you know, that if you're very mature, then the next stage is uh, death. Uh, and so here also, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, problems with the current uh, architectures. So how, how we propose to solve that? Uh, we say that we, we will try, and our hypothesis, if we split complexity between two levels, uh, we can manage to grow more complex uh, um, AI system. So as uh, in the traditional case, in case of the Dipavlov, we will start with the same MVP, but instead of uh, uh, life uh, growing this uh, small system, this small scale, we just integrate it in, into the uh, full agent as a some domain scale, and then you, of course, can uh, extend it to some uh, extent or to add some features, but if you see that uh, you go beyond some complexity, you cannot control your skill, you can just split it, you can just add another skill for a specific <laughs> task. So you uh, then end up with a more modular system, which is more controllable, and uh, which can uh, produce much more complex uh, results. So this is our vision, and uh, to uh, build some systems, we right now have uh, three components of our framework. The first one is a Dipavlov library on, on the left-hand side, and if this is like a, a Lego bricks for building your AI system, where, uh, which is on the level of uh, NLP, where you have different uh, tools and uh, ML models for intent recognition, name identity recognition, text classification, and so on. And then you use these blocks to create uh, conversational skills. Uh, and then you have a deep power of agent, which is framework, which allows you uh, to manage these uh, different skills uh, together to solve your problems. So this is uh, our approach. And uh, uh, as I've said, the first component is a deep public library, uh, which is an NLP library, and it provides uh, your, with uh, tools to uh, define your uh, NLP pipelines uh, in some declarative manner. In config files, you can define uh, how your components interact and send that data to each other, and also some um, uh, parameters of, uh, for your training. Uh, and uh, it has a interfaces and uh, to many other libraries and then you can easily run your pipeline as a uh, service which you can interact via API. And here is a number of uh, current uh, components which we have uh, in our libraries like as I already said, name digital recognition, name digital linking, slot feeding, uh, question answering code for the text, knowledge-based question answering, sentence similarity, morphological uh, tagging, selective parsing, and so on, also speech recognition and synthesis. And uh, uh, to more, uh, yesterday we have a um, <coughs> presentation about uh, zero-shot learning, 
and uh, I would like you to see how we can uh, use the same approach with our question answering model. So we have text create model which allows you to find the answer to your question in the text. And so you, you can easily use it to build your MVP for, for example, for some uh, restaurant booking applications without any data to, to train. So you can use uh, the zero shot learning key. You only, uh, the only information you need, you need description of your uh, uh, like ontology of uh, the, your data structure, what you want to extract from uh, user utterance. For example, here this might be uh, restaurant name, uh, party size, date, and uh, time with uh, some uh, possible values. And you can use this natural language description of your uh, variables uh, to uh, use them as a query to extract information from the user input. So let's uh, see how, how we can do this. So uh, now we are modeling, uh, like extracting information from the user input. Uh, which wants to, to book a restaurant. So we take a uh, uh, natural uh, language description of our variable, here it's name of the restaurant, and uh, we use uh, this demo of the Power of AI uh, page. Uh, enter text here, you have, I'd like to make a reservation at Parisian for two people on the 5th of March, and we ask what is the name of the restaurant, and we have uh, here Parisian as an output of the model. So we did not provide any data to, uh, for training. So we, we already used pre-trained model, and we just used natural language description of the information we want to extract, to extract it from the user query. So now we tested with the party size for reservation. You can see that model is still able to find it. Uh, and also for uh, the date, it also can find it correctly. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are some amount of errors uh, in this, but uh, you can collect some data and uh, find union model and you will uh, get uh, uh, much better results. But uh, even more, if you, have, uh, if you want to deploy your system in multiple languages, here our uh, question answering model is based on the multilingual uh, model. And it is only trained for English question answer, but can be used for other languages. Here, for example, we have uh, translated uh, this, the same query to Russian, and now we can use the same natural language description of uh, the variable in English, but find information in Russian. So you don't need to specify a meaning of your variables on the other languages. You can use only English uh, language to describe your variables, and still, uh, if we put name of the restaurant, it can find it correctly. So you don't need to perform localization. You can just lead a, you, you can just use a, a multilingual model uh, for to solve your problem. So this is how you can uh, try zero shot learning with our uh, library. So we already have some uh, pre-built uh, models, pre-built skills in our library, like a task-oriented board, open domain question answering, frequented question answering. Uh, skills and also we support AI ML and DRASA as uh, external libraries to implement skills in our framework. And uh, let me tell you about our latest features. So in, in the latest release we have uh, many features related to the knowledge graph integration. We have components for uh, entity linking, so you can link uh, some entities in your text like here Iro, Linnaeus, and uh, Austral in uh, their uh, text to the knowledge graph, and it, uh, you also uh, can extract relation between these entities uh, from texts. And uh, also based on that, uh, we have a KBQA model. If you have knowledge graph, then you perform uh, linking, uh, and uh, you perform relation extraction, and then you can uh, use it to, to create Sparkle query to your uh, knowledge graph and uh, receive uh, uh, answer, like uh, candidate answers, and then you rank them, uh, given the context, and select a possible answer to uh, your question. 
And uh, also, uh, we extended, uh, first, first of all, we are supporting uh, RASA configs uh, for our task oriented component right now, and we extend them with a specific component which we have developed during Alexa Prize uh, Challenge, uh, which is we have called Intent Catcher. catcher and uh, as uh, usually traditional intent recognition requires large amount of examples to define each intent, and um, we, you can use intent catcher to define with regular expression some uh, uh, common uh, phrasing of intents, and then uh, the system will automatically train NLU uh, by generating uh, augmented data given these um, uh, regular expressions. And uh, also, uh, in upcoming releases, we plan to uh, release a visual interface for our task-oriented skill and for uh, intent catcher. And uh, we also, uh, during our last uh, Alexa challenge, we have developed a domain-specific uh, language which allows you to uh, define a dialogue flow and uh, integrate it with uh, machine learning components. Uh, we called it uh, dialogue flow. Uh, framework, and uh, we have developed specific uh, Visual Studio extension which allows you to combine visual representation with uh, uh, code. Uh, this is uh, like DSL, uh, Python DSL, which allows you to define your uh, transition, your uh, dialogue. <coughs> and uh, our framework uh, is actively uh, applied uh, to different problems. Here I will show you two uh, governmental, uh, government related applications. The first one is a uh, linear system uh, which were uh, deployed about a uh, year and a half ago in uh, the Tatarstan uh, to help uh, with uh, COVID questions which were uh, and this assistant uh, were built, uh, was built on top of uh, Deepavlov and you see that uh, guys uh, at uh, Tatarstan was uh, very enthusiastic, and uh, after starting with COVID, uh, we decided to add more and more functionality. For example, for uh, like, uh, like gas payments, and for uh, vaccinations, and for uh, taxes, and uh, stuff like that. And also here we have a collaboration uh, with Armenia uh, in one of the uh, its collaboration with the uh, Armenia. National uh, Sustainable Development Goals Innovation Lab, uh, and uh, they have a project AI uh, Mulberry, uh, which is a system that helps to sort uh, citizen requests to the uh, government. And we have uh, guys used uh, Deep Power uh, to build uh, this system. So it's very great that we have also these direct collaborations with uh, our team. Uh, now let, let's take a look uh, what is like the most complex system we have built uh, with our approach uh, up to date. This is our uh, dream Alexa social board, which we are using during our competition in um, Alexa Prize Challenge. Alexa Prize Challenge is a competition by uh, Amazon Alexa, which uh, uh, allows uh, academic uh, teams to compete to solve the challenge of uh, the 20 minutes uh, open domain, engaging open domain dialogue. And you can see here that uh, using our uh, Deep Power of Agent and Deep Power of Framework, we can use a very complex pipeline with the multiple skills, with the uh, complex uh, multiple annot annotators, uh, which is for NLU, then uh, multiple skills for different topics, and uh, uh, complex system for uh, candidate uh, res response, candidate annotation, response selection, and, and so on. So now we are in the process of publishing it, and I think that in, in a couple of months you you will be able to use it as a, your open source personal assistant and uh, deploy it on your servers, uh, servers and uh, use it. <coughs> and uh, it was already tested uh, for a couple of years on the US users. So we usually have something like uh, 5,000 uh, 5, uh, dialogues per day during the competition like for, for a few months. And so uh, if we have a, a high level uh, look at the current deep power ecosystem, uh, we have uh, in our framework, we have uh, uh, 
uh, free components, the public library, the public agent, and the public dream. And here is the public library is to build uh, skills and to build uh, services for your agent. And the power of agent is its uh, uh, orchestrator for your skills. And the power of dream is a uh, repository for conversational skills. And if we place our uh, components at the conversational uh, technology stack, we are uh, covering like uh, three levels, levels on this stack on the open source side. And this is multi-skill orchestration. I think that we are uh, right now a unique solution for this uh, level, which is an open source domain. And also we cover conversation skills development and some NLP tasks <coughs> here. So thank you for your attention and I'm happy if there is some time left. Thank you. I think we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I would like to ask uh, how easy it is to add uh, new languages, and uh, here I mean uh, Armenian, and, but uh, in general. And uh, if you can, can you say a few words about what is knowledge base and what is it? Just yeah. that. Thanks. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I think that uh, to get better uh, practical understanding, you better talk with guys from the Armenian SDG lab uh, about uh, using uh, Armenian language. Uh, so uh, superficially, if you want to build some like MVP system to test uh, some hypothesis, you can use these multilingual models which, which we have. But of course, if you want to have a uh, like more sophisticated system, you need to uh, adapt it and train your uh, models. And uh, so the second question was uh, about a knowledge graph. Uh, uh, currently, we are using uh, Wikidata as our main knowledge graph. Uh, Thank you for your talk. Uh, my question is: uh, Do do your uh, does your um, orchestrator or any any orchestrator you have um, support relational natural queries? For example, uh, I'm asking uh, AI assistant, what's the weather today? I have a talk at uh, date fest. Uh, so consider you know how to answer what's the weather at some day, and where, uh, when do I have a talk at data fest? Does your orchestrator or any other framework, you know, uh, support that kind of uh, joining two queries together and asking them. Uh, to solve this task, uh, you already need uh, to have, uh, I think, that uh, heavy integration of background knowledge uh, to, to, to answer your question, uh, to, to answer this query. Because uh, you, you need to know data fest, you need to know your location, because data fest can be in one uh, city or in another city, have different dates. Uh, so there is no general solution for that, but in principle it can be integrated in our system. One last question. Okay, I will ask a short one. Uh, you mentioned that uh, when you go from English to Russian, it can happen immediately. Do you use this uh, multilingual language models for this stuff, or it's a different strategy? Yes, yes. So it's uh, uh, it's multilingual. It, it's uh, squad model trained on English squad, uh, but uh, which is based on top of multilingual. Part. So I so so it's trained trained only in English, but uh, like initial model is multilingual. So the idea is that you can transfer a specific uh, fine-tuning for task, like your head is trained only for English, but still you can solve uh, task in Russian or in Armenian, uh, still with the uh, same model. So you don't need Armenian or Russian data for training. So it works in practice? Somehow. In some yeah. cases, yes. But certainly if you have more like diverse uh, queries, you will have more errors than if you add data. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.